I'm calling the meeting to order, please. I know there are people still up the back signing in, but we have to get proceedings underway. We have people who are in need of getting to other arrangements. Again, just down the back, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here to the briefing for the 32nd Land Rover Sydney to Gold Coast Yacht Race. I want to acknowledge and welcome a number of people, just briefly. It's important that we acknowledge and uh, thank very much the sponsor, Land Rover. Uh, and uh, while we don't have any representatives there, I will make, make them uh, know that we're all very grateful for their support. This evening uh, I'll be introducing a number of people, but I welcome from the South Southport Yacht Club, Kerry Noyes, the Commodore, and Bromwyn Hemmings, the Marketing Manager. Uh, in a moment we'll call on uh, Kerry to address the meeting following uh, Tim Cox's address. Uh, I'll introduce to you the people handling the weather briefing for us tonight. Jane Golding is a person who's familiar to many of you who have raced the Blue Water races and had briefings this, uh, of this type. Uh, Jane actually addressed us uh, at most recently at the Rolex Sydney to, Gold, uh, sorry, Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race uh, last year and uh, is quite accomplished in giving us all of the details. She'll give us an up-to-date uh, briefing in a moment. Uh, Jane is accompanied by Anne Farrell, who's the regional head for the Bureau uh, and uh, will obviously be ably assisted in the briefing and uh, helping us keep to date. Without further ado, would you please welcome Jane Golding. Thanks for that and um, thanks very much uh, everyone for coming along tonight to listen. I'm just going to go through um, a few safety uh, items related to the Bureau's forecast. Uh, so just um, a refresher on um, the terminology that the Bureau uses to describe wind strengths and sea heights and um, also I'll run through um, some of the products that the Bureau of Meteorology issues that are, are relevant for the, for the race. And uh, following that, I'll just briefly go through the forecast conditions for Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So just starting off firstly with a refresher on, the, uh, on our forecast terminology. So the Bureau, um, when we're talking about wind strength and direction, we're, we're always referring in the coastal waters and the high seas forecast to the mean wind strength. So that's the the wind um, averaged over a 10 minute period. And um, that speed's given in knots. Uh, it's expressed as the direction from, so uh, different to the current, uh, a northwesterly wind coming from the northwest. And um, that's relevant to race conditions. Uh, the gusts we do not include in the forecast, but um, can be 40% above the main wind strength and uh, they will be um, higher than the main wind strength. Uh, for waves, um, there's two wave, um, two wave types that we talk about in our forecast. So there's, there's the, the um, wind wave, which is um, the sea waves driven by the local wind. Um, so for this race, the, the wind wave height's not expected to be too high for the first couple of days at least. And then the swell, which is generated by distant weather systems. So it's relevant for the first day of the race. There's a, a southerly swell coming through. The significant wave, um, which is um, also mentioned on some of our forecasts, refers to the average height of the top third of the waves that come through. Maximum waves can be uh, twice the significant wave height. The Bureau issues, issues warnings um, once the wind speed, main wind speed is uh, expected to get above um, 25 knots. So the wind warnings um, kick in at um, the strong wind warning. So strong wind warnings, 25 to 33 knots. Gale, 34 to 47. Storm force, 48 to 63. And hurricane force, don't often say that off New South Wales, 63 knots or more. Uh, there is uh, one period where there may be a strong uh, wind warning out for the race, but n not expecting gale wind warnings um, for, the f for the race. And uh, I've just gone through all of that, but that's uh, just a slide going into the, um, 
into the wind and um, the sea height that uh, the wind wave height that you get with a strong wind is um, normally around three to five metres. Uh, some of the products at the Bureau issues that will be relevant for the, um, for the race area are uh, the coastal wind, coastal waters forecasts and warnings. So they cover the area from the coast out to 60 nautical miles offshore. Uh, we issue those twice a day uh, when there are no warnings out, but four times a day when there are warnings, and update them if um, conditions that we're observing are vastly different to what the forecast says. Uh, so, yeah, as mentioned, the warnings um, go out every six hours, and when the warnings are reissued, the forecasts are reissued as well. And um, the forecasts are also available uh, through MedEye, which is a, a graphical system. Um, but um, the, obviously through radio, they'll just come through in, as words. Uh, the relevant coastal water zones for this race, so we've got the Sydney, uh, once, once you come out through the heads, the Sydney coast, moving up through the Hunter, the Macquarie, the Coffs, the Byron um, from the New South Wales part of the coast and then the southeast coast or zone when you get into Queensland. This is an example of the coastal waters forecast that you can, um, prior to the race, you can access through the Bureau's website. Uh, so you can see um, there's a weather situation, which is just a, a brief summary of the synoptics, and then um, uh, wind, seas, swell, and um, a summary of the weather as well over that zone. This one is for um, the Sydney coastal waters, so up to, um, to Broken Bay. The marine wind warnings, um, the Bureau issues, is really just a pointer to the forecast. So there's no details given in the, the product that we call the marine waters warning. It's more a, a pointer to go to that there is a warning out and to source the information from the relevant coastal waters forecast. And uh, this is an example of um, how you can access the forecast in a graphical way. Like it's, it's, it's a bit tricky sometimes to uh, summarise close to 60 nautical miles out in uh, just a few words. So um, the, the graphics are out there for a bit of extra detail. There are high seas forecasts as well um, for the race area. So this is relevant for if you're going more than 60 nautical miles offshore and it's the southeastern uh, high seas forecast that would be the relevant forecast for this race. Uh, a new warning that the Bureau's just um, started as a standalone product uh, relevant for any coastal bar crossings up the coast is um, the hazardous surf warnings. We issue this when we see long period swell coming through that um, might make bar crossings um, dangerous and it's also targeted at rock fishermen as well. It, it doesn't look like there'll be one of these out for the next few days though. So all the forecasts can be accessed through the, uh, the Marine Weather Services page. There's a link on the Bureau's front page down the bottom. Uh, and along with the coastal waters, the closed waters, um, you also can get information on tides, sea uh, temperature and currents, and um, also some model, model data as well from the Australian model. Uh, because um, it can take quite a lot of data to download from the Bureau's main page, there's a light version of it um, where you can just access the text forecasts and um, if you just type in light at the end of um, the, the marine page, you'll be able to access that. So once you're out on the water, the, you can access the um, forecasts in a few different ways. Uh, high seas forecasts and warnings through Imaset HF radio are broadcast every four hours and the warnings repeated every hour and VHF um, also another way to access coastal waters forecast warnings and observations. Okay, so now I've done a bit of a refresher. I'll just talk a bit about what the forecast looks like for the race. Uh, so 
big picture. Um, it's a satellite picture from four o'clock this afternoon. So you can see a front um, just stretching to the east of uh, Adelaide and approaching Tassie at the moment. That should move through tomorrow and bring a southerly change up the New South Wales coast. Uh, but after that, the winds, we're expecting them to turn back around to the north pretty quickly and uh, race start, there'll be a northerly wind blowing. This front over here is something to watch because as that moves over towards us on Monday, we may see a, a low develop, so if, which would bring a, some sort of a southerly change up the northern half of the coast on Tuesday if um, the, you're still moving up the coast at that time. So that's big picture. A couple of fronts, uh, mainly northerly winds. Let's we just need to watch what happens with that low on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and that's a summary of the mean sea level pressure. So you can see by tomorrow, um, tomorrow night, that front's just clipping the, the southern corner of New South Wales and um, we've got southerlies moving up the coast. And then a high pressure system sets in on Saturday with the northerly flow moving down over New South Wales. And uh, by Sunday, um, we're still in northerlies, uh, and mon Monday we'll just watch and see what happens with this low. There's a bit of difference in the models at the moment as to what, how that will develop, how close to the coast, whether it will hang around or not. And um, so that's a summary. So the winds we're expecting at race time is somewhere in between five to ten knots in Sydney Harbour. Um, Weather's looking pretty good for the first couple of days of the race. Fine and sunny on the Saturday. Sunday looks like a really nice warm day for uh, northern New South Wales. Uh, 10 to 15 knots from the north on Sunday as well. And then increasing on Monday, still from the north to northwest. Up the, oh, I can go through this in a bit more detail. Um, and then a southerly change moving through on Tuesday. Uh, southerly swell to start as a bit of a hangover from that system that came through, comes through tomorrow. And then that southerly swell moves away pretty quickly and we drop off to an east northeasterly. Uh, so that's just, that's a graphic of the area around Sydney at around about race time. So five knots to 10 knots, and then maybe getting up 10 to 15 if you move off the coast a bit as you move out through the heads, uh, and you can see it's largely a northerly direction coming from the north. By the time um, you get you're heading up the Hunter Coast, um, it's still northerly, there's not a lot of wind strength in there, still 10 to 15 knots, not much more than that. Uh, the seas are pretty low, weather's pretty good. Uh, start to pick up maybe a little bit on um, Saturday night, but still coming from the north. Uh, if inshore waters, it should be lighter than offshore waters from that direction. Might have a bit of westerly in the inshore waters to it. That's okay. And then by Sunday night, look, there's not really a lot of change. Um, by that point, the winds are still northerly. It's really Monday that the winds start to pick up uh, as, you, as you're moving up the northern half of New South Wales coast. So somewhere in the 15 to 25 knot range. Uh, it's a couple of days out, so um, it's not, un, not impossible that um, the forecast gets updated and we, we might see some 25 to 30 knots offshore, but forecast at the moment is um, 15 to 25 knots. Uh, as you're heading up the mid-north coast. And then by Monday night, depending on where you are, it's still a northerly. So it's a northerly Saturday, Sunday and Monday for the race, uh, but um, in increasing in speed on the Monday. And then the models at the moment on the Tuesday, the, the model that we, um, I guess we've got the most confidence in, has got that low developing off the coast on Monday and then a southerly moving up behind it on Tuesday. So that's Tuesday. 
and that's just a snapshot of what the waves are on when you start. So the numbers are on um, the period, not super high, um, and maybe a, if you one and a half metre swell. For the current as well, it's looking like a, norther, a southerly current. Um, the whole, the, our models are suggesting it's a southerly current at the moment and um, some relatively warm seawaters so sitting off uh, Ballina, stretching down. And uh, that's as far as I've looked for the race out to Tuesday. So north-northwest winds uh, to start, pretty light. Picking up on Monday, southerly change on Tuesday. Southerly swell then um, dropping off to a, a east northeasterly background, southerly current, and um, it looks like fine weather until that southerly comes through where there might be some showers. And that's all I've got. So thanks very much and have a good race. So